Howdy folks, welcome back. Gotta work on my Ford today. It's my trusty old steed. 95 Ford F250 with the 7.3 power stroke diesel engine. Let's see if it'll start. Because it doesn't seem to want to do that very often. So, here's the magic trick. Flip on the key. We're looking for the voltmeter needle to drop below the end. It's not going to do it. Okay, so that means the glow plug relay is not working. So, we've got to grab our manual glow plug relay and pop the hood. Let's see if I can do this all one handed. Oh, now, this is a chainsaw specific glow plug relay jumper, but I think it'll work on this Ford. So, we'll give that a 10 count. Dude, come on. Dude, 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 dude. How to do it. Toss that back in the jumper holder. A little bit of clutch. And boom, away we go. All right, let's get this thing inside. Well, I didn't have any cool or exciting jobs come in the shop this week, so I figured I'd just phone in a video about me fixing my own broken junk, and we'll wait for the thumbs down to come rolling in. Here's a list of what we're going to do. It needs a glow plug relay, I'm pretty sure. We'll do some testing, but I'm 99.999% sure that the relay is bad. It needs an HVAC motor and resistor. I've replaced the resistor once before. It blew out again. The motor bearings are bad. It's pulling too many amps. We've got a new IPR valve and pigtail. You'll remember back in the fall I replaced the IPR valve because the truck wouldn't run. I actually installed the wrong one because the right one was a special order item. I've got it here now. So we're going to go ahead and put the right one in and we'll keep the other one for a spare. It's got a rusted out spring hanger and there's a bad belt tensioner pulley. So here's the parts. Mostly junk aftermarket stuff from the local auto parts stores. I did buy the actual Motorcraft IPR valve. So we've got an interesting representation of the global auto parts market. We've got a HVAC blower motor made in Canada, HVAC resistor made in Mexico, an actual squirrel cage fan made in the USA, Glow plug relay made in Taiwan. IPR valve pigtail made in Taiwan. Replacement pad for the brake or clutch pedal made in Taiwan. IPR valve made in USA. Belt tensioner made in USA. Leaf spring hanger made in China. So that's what we're working with. Let's get to it. Here's the glow plug relay on this 7.3 power stroke. These are notoriously unreliable, so pretty sure this is the problem but we better check it just to be sure so the best way that I've found to test these high amperage relays is using the old amp clamp here so what I like to do is just clamp around the coil wire stick this little gizmo here we'll zero this out close enough make sure we're in millivolts DC and I'll go turn the key on Okay, so the relay just clicked off, and you heard it mechanically click. Yeah, so that means the control side is working, and if it's pulling 3 amps, that's plenty of power to power up the relay. That almost seems like too much. Okay, so now the second test is to do the same thing around the actual high amperage wire. It's doing a little bit of something, but that's not nearly enough current. This thing should flow, I don't know, 40 amps or something. The glow plugs take a tremendous amount of current. So that's all the testing we have to do. We know we have sufficient current carrying capacity through these control wires to power the coil of the relay. We also know that we have sufficient current carrying capacity through the load wires because we shorted it with our prison shank and 
you know, obviously the glow plugs were able to, to come on and we were able to start the engine. So there's nothing wrong with this circuit, nothing wrong with this circuit. The problem is the relay. Someday I'm going to have to fix these battery cables. The previous owner was clearly a farmer. What is it, pup? Is Timmy in a well? I think he's okay. So one thing you got to be careful with, these glow plug relays are kind of expensive. And I hate telling people what I pay for things because no matter what I say, someone's going to tell me I got ripped off and you could buy that for $6 on Rock Auto or whatever. I paid 50 bucks for this for my local auto parts supplier. Maybe it was like $54 or something like that. Anyway, why is it so expensive? Because... Here's the regular starter relay right here. These are like $14 or something like that. So why, why is this one so much more expensive? So if you look at a wiring diagram, the answer is pretty obvious. The reason that these coil plug relays are so much more expensive is because they're ground side switched. So the coil side of the relay gets power from this red and light green wire. That's, I don't know, one of these, whatever it is goes through that little pigtail and it's hot at all times and then the PCM actually turns on the relay by switching one side to ground and the starter relay doesn't work that way yeah here's the relay here and you see that the one side of the coil is just connected directly to ground and then it gets a power from the ignition switch so the the cheap starter relays will not work as a glow plug relay. So hopefully that clears it up. Uh, it also makes it kind of tricky to troubleshoot these with a test light because it's ground side switched. That's why I like using the clamp on amp meter. Now well, that's gotten pretty toasty at some point in time. Maybe we ought to put some new shrink wrap on that. Oh, I probably don't have the right thing to go over top of that eyelet though. So maybe I better just leave it alone. Let's see somebody's already taped this one up. So this is your supply. And then these two brown wires are for your glow plugs. One for the left bank, one for the right bank. Use plenty of dielectric goo. Do, 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 do. These terminals look pretty clean, so I'm not gonna worry too much about cleaning them up. I don't think there's any any barriers to conductivity of electricity here. Did Taiwan send me the wrong nut? Because she doesn't want to go on there. That thread looks a lot finer than that thread. Let's see if the old ones will go on. Yeah. Alright. So. Somebody in the Taiwan shipping department screwed that up. Sent me the wrong nuts. And again, it won't make any difference on the polarity of the control wires. 
wonder if these nuts are right. It's not looking good. Yep, okay. Still get people on the comment section telling me that I talk too much in the videos. Just show the work, don't talk. Wouldn't that be kind of weird? I mean, just watching somebody do something and not having any idea, like, why? We can try it if you guys want. I don't care. The talking is for you guys, not for me. I guess you could say that about the whole video. I mean... Anyway, there we go. Okay, battery's hooked up. Let's test this pig out. And you'd think the owner would clean out this trash heap. Here we go. So, key on. Okay, you hear the relay. And then you see the voltmeter went just below the N. I know it's working. We don't need to do any more testing. You can check it all from the driver's seat. So a bird, a robin to be specific, has built herself a nest right here in my scrap metal pile. She just flew off. There's three eggs in there. She's been sitting on them for, I don't know, five, six days now that I've noticed. Could be longer than that. I don't know how long it takes for them to hatch, but we're going to keep an eye on her. Seems like an odd place to build a nest, but maybe she realizes that scrap prices are chronically low, so it's as safe a place as any right now. Sounds pretty healthy, doesn't it? This is actually a good day. You should hear it when it's really cold. Nothing to it but to do it. Go ahead and get that out of there. And I'm pretty sure this is not the original blower motor since somebody's done a, a hack job here on the pigtail. So, either a critter chewed through that or they grafted in some kind of a replacement blower motor at some point in time. Alright. Now we're going to have to move the old uh, washer fluid tank. Luckily the degas bottle, she just sits in here. It's old Isaac Newton holding it in there. You don't need to bother with any fasteners or hold downs or anything. Pretty efficient system. Okay, here's our new blower motor. And I bought a new replacement metal fan. It should fit should fit right on there. The blower motor shaft has a flat for that set screw. So that looks good. And I always like to do that, replace the fan, because normally these are pressed on and you can try like heat guns and stuff, but usually you're gonna you're gonna basically destroy these getting them off of the, the blower motor. You see this one's already been screwed up and somebody put a hose clamp on it to try to hold it onto the shaft. So we can dispense with all that nonsense and just start over. Of 
course the other telltale sign that somebody's been here one of the screws is different than the others and that's because I put it in because it was missing one of the screws so you know how that goes probably because the guy dropped it just like I dropped that one don't worry it's right there So that's the blower motor resistor right there. It's super simple control. They just run the power feed to the blower motor through a resistor. And that slows down the motor. There it is. Doesn't look that bad. But I know it doesn't work, so get it out of here. It's got the classic old school Ford connector with the two locking tabs. It's probably the same blower motor resistor they've been using since the 50s. Well, it looks like the problem with the old one here is the this little resistor right here. Whatever it is, film resistor or something like that. Anyway, on the new one, 0.1 ohms, but this one's open. Uh, the wire wound ones are fine. So I guess if you wanted to figure out what that little component is and bodge in a new one, you could avoid buying the whole blower motor relay, but these aren't that expensive. so. We'll get that one thrown in, see if it works. Okay, mission accomplished. Let's move on to something else. There she is. She's not too happy that I'm here. that comes out of there without taking this other stupid pulley off. So we're going to find out. Oh, okay, did it break or did it come loose? Oh, the ratchet cam door. There we go. Old snap on quality. I see. So they put a little o-ring on this thing. I guess so the bolt won't fall out while they're trying to put it together. There we go. Well, unfortunately, these are not the same. The lever on this one, the new one's quite a bit longer than the old one. So I don't know. I don't want to stick it on there because I'm worried that it'll be the belt will be too short. So I'm thinking, you know, all that's really wrong with this one, the tensioner is fine, it's just the pulleys, the bearings and the pulley are bad. 
So I'm wondering if we can just swap the pulleys over and I'll just reuse the tensioner. We'll see how this goes. I don't know. These might be left hand thread. Okay, had to go over to the vise and popped it loose. It is a left hand thread, like I thought. And that makes sense because there's no other mechanism to release the tension other than putting a tool on this bolt. And because they wanna, you want to rotate the tensioner this way to remove the belt, you'd basically be trying to loosen this bolt all the time. So they just made it a left hand thread. So it looks like our new pulley will fit right on there. So I'll put some Loctite on here. That'll work. Use a little bit of Loctite on both of these bolts into the accessory bracket just because I don't want this stuff coming loose. Okay, I did notice something that's a little weird. Check out this bolt in the alternator. Looks like a hardware store bolt. So, let's see if we can do something about that. Now let's check the old SOS system back here. Stuff on a shelf. Pretty sure that's a Ford alternator. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the right bolt. So the question you're all going to ask is, how could they possibly have lost one of the original alternator bolts? Well, I have no idea. Some mysteries will never be solved. I guess we should just be glad that they actually put three bolts back in it. Okay, fixed. This is the IPR valve that we installed in this engine a few months ago. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. The problem is it's not the right one for this engine. This is for a later model engine that has a filter built into the high pressure oil reservoir housing. Whereas my engine does not have that filter and it needs this edge filter that's built directly into the IPR valve. So the reason I put the wrong one in, this IPR with the edge filter is much less common. They only used it I think for two years, 94 and 95. And this is a special order item. It took a couple weeks for me to get this. Whereas this one is in stock and I had it basically the same day. So this one will work with this engine. You know, functionally they're the same. It's just the difference of this filter. So I'll toss this one on the shelf. We'll keep it as a known good. It's nice to have a known good IPR valve for troubleshooting these, pro these power strokes. There really is no other good way to test the high pressure, you know, regulating system other than having a known good regulator. So I've got a known good for a, a 6 liter. So it'd be nice to have a known good for a 7.3. So I'll pop that guy in. Simple process. I'm not going to show you. It's the same as how I did it before. I pop the plug out here of the high pressure oil reservoir, suck the oil out, and then I'm going to stick the regulator in, tighten it up, and then we'll put the we'll fill this thing back up with the oil that we took out of it. I put it into a clean container. I'm going to go ahead and reuse it. So this is the wiring harness that runs down to the IPR valve. And I want to put a new pigtail on because Where's the new one? The connector is okay, it's just it's missing this little weather pack seal from the backside, so I 
filled it up with RTV silicone, but I wasn't super happy with that. I mean, it doesn't, probably doesn't matter because it's inside, you know, tucked down inside the valley of the engine. It's not a, not a highly corrosive place, but might as well do it because it's cheap and easy. And there's really no reason not to. I don't know, the rest of this connector is just a disaster. The clip's broken here. I noticed that the clip that holds this plug together is also broken, so... Yeah, I don't know what they were doing. Anyway, I'll fix it up here real quick. The well, polarity shouldn't matter on these wires because it just controls a coil. So it's not like we're, you know, connecting one side to ground. Okay, I think we're done underneath the hood. I got the new pigtail routed, and then I just put a zip tie around this other connector where the tab's broken off. It's a little janky, but won't hurt anything I guess. So let's move on to the bottom side. Okay, where we're going to be looking is on the rear axle. And we're looking at the rear spring hanger. And there's your problem lady. She done rusted out. Pretty common problem on these old body style Fords. Uh, very common problem on these old body style Fords. Pretty much all of them in this area will eventually rust out. It's just there's a pocket here and it fills up with crud and salt and dirt and moisture and pretty soon it rots this out and then you don't have you know very much strength in your spring hanger. Uh, this is also a common problem on the GM trucks from this era. Uh, it's such a common problem in fact that my local auto parts store has one of these brackets in stock for both the Ford and the GM. So all we gotta do is get this big bolt out of here hopefully. And then we'll cut the heads off of these four rivets, drop the old bracket out, stick the new bracket in. New bracket comes with bolts to replace the rivets, and away we go. Well, cross your fingers, folks. She's pretty crusty. Pretty crusty. Urgh. Oh, yeah, right. Well, this is going about as well as you might expect for a 25 year old truck and the rust belt. This bolt, she's seized inside of the metal sleeve that goes inside of the rubber bushing that goes inside of this spring hanger or shackle or whatever you want to call it. And I've tried impacts, I've tried air hammers, I've tried heat doesn't seem to want to come loose. I actually broke the whole outside of the bracket off. Trying to get it loose. I mean the bracket's already junk anyway. So what I think we're going to do, we'll go ahead and just zip off the four rivets. We'll drop the thing down and then we'll see if we can deal with it once it's, you know, kind of down here.
Well, that was a battle. <laughs> Alright, folks. I finally got this thing all apart about 9 o'clock last night. I don't know how much of it I filmed or didn't film or how that's going to turn out. So this thing's in pretty sad shape. The rubber bushing is... It's there, but it's, it's starting to come apart here on the outside edges. So I can't get one of these today. It'll be a special order item. So I think what we're going to do, we'll install the new bracket. We'll go ahead and install this shackle or hanger or whatever you want to call it for now. And then I'll see about getting a new shackle and a couple new bolts. And then at some point down the road, we can replace this and we won't have to worry about this rubber bushing. But we'll have the structural integrity of the new bracket so we can run it that way for, for quite a while. Anyway, let's get to it. Thank you, assistant. Too early in the morning. We'll just snug these bolts up and then we'll do the final torque once we get it set down on the ground so that it's in the kind of in its neutral position. Okay folks, I think that's it. It looks pretty good. And like I said, I'll have to replace this doohickey eventually, but this will get us by for a while. You know, it'll only be temporary unless it works kind of a deal. And the bracket looks good. Uh, it also, there's an improvement. They put a drain hole in the bottom of this pocket so that hopefully that doesn't happen again. But like I said, extremely common problem on these trucks. Okay, let's put her down. All right, folks, I think we're done. Let's go ahead and start it up and make sure there's no big oil leaks or, you know, it's not going to throw the belts off or whatever. Uh, in the last video I made about replacing that IPR valve, a lot of people were concerned about the extended crank time. That is totally normal with these Huey injection systems. Anytime you tinker with the high pressure oil system, you know, if you remove the IPR valve, the ICP sensor, do anything with the high pressure oil pump, you're going to introduce air into that system and it takes a long time for it to bleed that air out. So the best thing to do usually just take them out on the road and drive them. Uh, 30 minutes of driving, you know, at let's say 55 miles an hour, it'll straighten that right out and it'll start just fine for you.
So you hear it's running a little bit rough. That's from the air in the system. It's gonna take a while to come out of that. So don't be alarmed. Okay, folks, I think that's it. We got her all fixed up. I don't know what to do with this truck. Maybe you folks have some insight. I, I like it. The 7.3 Power Stroke and the ZF 5-speed transmission, you know, those will be running long after I'm dead. There's multiple documented million mile plus 7.3 Power Strokes, so that's not an issue. It's only got 161,000 miles on it. The frame is solid. You know, it's really not rusty other than the, you know, the normal old body style Ford stuff like that spring hanger. So it needs radius rod bushings on the front. It kind of clunks pretty bad. Other than that, there's really no you know drivability issues with it but the big problem is the truck is you know it's 25 years old and it spent the first I don't know maybe eight or ten years of its life as a tire store service truck you can still kind of see faintly in the side where it says Firestone and they just beat the ever-living crap out of it every single body panel on the thing is bad so the rear bumper is not too bad the tailgates junk the box sides are junk the rear fuel tank is rusted out it leaks the front fuel tank doesn't leak but the sending unit doesn't work i never know how much fuel is in it the cabs beat up the cab floors are rusted through the dash pads cracked the radio doesn't work the seat is absolutely trashed uh, the interior really isn't too bad otherwise but this is the plainest interior you can possibly imagine it has no headliner no air conditioning no power windows no power door locks no tilt steering wheel wait maybe it does have tilt steering wheel hang on let's look nope no tilt steering wheel i mean nothing has no options the 7.3 power stroke diesel engine was the only option that they bought this thing with uh front fenders are rusted out front bumper is bent and rusted through there's the hole you can see through on the other side the fenders rusted out the hood is kinked they must have shut something in it windshields cracked it's got the wrong mirrors on it so you can't use the little flipper windows because they actually hit the mirrors uh, other side of the box is actually even worse because it's rusted out and they ran it into something and you know scraped it all up and broke the tail light uh, the front headlight trim is broken the one headlight's been replaced. The other one's so cloudy it basically does nothing. But, you know, at the same time, it still runs and drives. I can easily get 20 miles per gallon with this truck. It rides nice because it's two-wheel drive. It can tow a lot because it's a three-quarter ton truck. It's got a real floating axle and it's got the power stroke diesel engine. So, I don't know. I've actually got a list of people that want this truck. It's a short list, but there is a list. So I'm kind of thinking about selling it maybe and uh, trying to find something better. But you guys tell me what you think. This is the problem with diesel engine trucks where I live. You know, the, the engine's gonna live forever but the, the whole truck is gonna fall apart around it. And yeah, that's pretty much true for all of them. You never get the, you never get the whole life out of the engine because the truck is the weakest link. So. Anywho, thanks guys for watching, and we'll see what kind of video comes out of this. And I've got some more interesting stuff coming up for next time, so hopefully I won't have to phone in two in a row.